The, uh, I think there's notes and maybe CDs, I'm not sure, still in the back. Um, the, the videos on YouTube for last week, it was like a highly requested one. I'm not sure why, probably because it was really controversial. Um, we're living in a generation of where prophecy is being fulfilled. Amen. We are living in a generation that is quickly speeding toward <clears throat> a lot of conclusion. Um, when you look around the nation right now, <clears throat> um, you know, to, to think that <clears throat> things are going to get better, you have to be almost delusional. The devil has such a, a strong, he's been given. How many know the devil doesn't take anything? He's been given the permission. You know, he, he's, still the, he's still God's devil. God still owns him. So, but what he's allowed to do is it being increased. And we're seeing it right now. If you look all around the nation, we're seeing it right now, real time. And so, um, we need to be in prayer. We need to be seeking the Lord. We need to be fasting. Um, we'll have prayer here tonight again, five o'clock tonight, if you want to come. We had a uh, tremendous time again last week. God was just moved here, and I was just thankful. Um, <clears throat> you know, prophecy can come any, in, in a lot of different ways. And I was thinking of this this morning. There was a song back in the, how many have ever heard of the Christian band Creedence Clearwater Revival? <laughs> well, it has revival in it. I think that this song is prophetic. Of course, it was written in the 70s, but I see the bad moon arising. I see trouble on the way. I see earthquakes and lightning. I see bad times today. He says, I hear hurricanes a blowing. I know the end is coming soon. I fear rivers overflowing. The, literally, every prophetic thing that I've read follows the lines of this. I hear the voice of rage and ruin. He says, don't go out tonight. It's bound to take your life. There's a bad mood on the rise. He said, I hope you got your things together. I hope you're quite prepared to die. Looks like we're in for nasty weather. One eye is taken for an eye. And then he goes on to say, don't come out tonight. It's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. Everything that he wrote in that song is prophetically sound for the generation that we live in right now. <clears throat> this is called a, the fuse is lit. Revelation 14. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice of heaven as a voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. What an awesome thought. These are they which were not defiled with women for their virgins. These are they which follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, that same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 
And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from now on. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Is there one more? Is that it? That was it. Now there's a lot going on in these verses. We were talking about some of this last week. The first fruits of the bride has been taken. This, in this uh, scripture that I just read to you, John tells us that these first fruits, this 144,000, <clears> again, these are the wise virgins who were ready when the bridegroom returned. This season will be horrifying and shocking to a multitude of Christians who were seen by men to be faithful believers. Many pastors and teachers and high visibility Christians will no longer be able to hide behind their hypocrisy as the fact that they have been left behind will be the proof that they obviously weren't practicing what they were preaching. Multitudes will despair of life. They will despair quickly at this point. I believe that there will be many that will take their lives at this point. The tribulation will begin to increase exponentially. Verse 13, he says, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from now on. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. <clears throat> many, many believers will die during this season. After the first rapture, the rapture of the first fruits or the bride of Christ, the wise virgins, after they're taken from the earth, many believers in that season will die. And in fact, there will be a lot in that season that can kill you. There will be increased famine and disease and plague will abound. There will be great increase in massive natural disasters and in supernatural disasters. There will be tsunamis and earthquakes. All of these are prophesied in Scripture. Tsunamis, earthquakes, fires, meteor and asteroid strikes will occur. There'll be, uh, Scripture prophesies, and I'm going to preach these one of these days. I'll get them all together one of these days. I have all these things in my head. I'll get them all together for you. But Scripture prophesies where there'll be a great earthquake that will divide the United States into three parts. The Great Lakes will become one great lake. The Mississippi River at its narrowest point will be 50 miles wide. Massive tsunamis and earthquakes. There will be bands of roaming men in the earth in search of food that will kill great numbers of people indiscriminately. Look what Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 13. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces will be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Do you know what will move the, the earth out of her place? You notice it says that meteor strikes will move the earth off her axis. The continents will even change places. Places that were cold will become hot. Places that were hot will become cold. It'll be something that the world, it'll be something like out of a movie that the world has never experienced before. Terrifying times. 
Remember in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus referred to the season of tribulation. He called it a furnace of fire. This furnace is twofold. One reason is to exterminate the sinners from the globe, which God said in Isaiah, I'm going to kill the sinners. How many noticed when he said that? I'm going to destroy the sinners. So one reason is to exterminate sinners from the globe, but the other is to purify the body of Christ that's been left behind. How many know there's going to be a vast body of Christ that's going to be left behind? I've heard prophets predict anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. What's the difference between the bride or the wise virgins? Those who are initially taken and the foolish virgins who are left behind. What's the difference? The wise virgins or the first fruits are what we would refer to as the cream of the crop. They're wise because they learn the easy way. How many have a hard time learning the easy way? How many have found in your life usually you learn the hard way? The wise virgins learn things the easy way. Why? Because they're compliant rather than obstinate. What I want you to know is people learn the easy way when they're compliant. Pride goes, yeah, I'll figure it out myself. The wise are compliant rather than obstinate. The foolish are those who are stubborn. Their pride makes them defiant. But it's not that God hasn't given them multitudes of opportunity to repent. It's just that many believers remain blinded by the, to the truth by their own proud hearts. They don't want to see the truth. They constantly question what the truth is. But when the truth is shown to them, they still reject it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to accept the truth. Isaiah prophesied that the day of the Lord would cause all who are remaining on the globe to be filled with terror. Look at verse 9 again. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of the earth. How many know that's a terrifying thought? The prophet describes the day of the Lord here as cruel. How many noticed that? The word cruel in Webster means to willfully cause pain and suffering without any feeling of concern. How many know that's not the God that you have supposed he was? But here, the prophet says, through the voice of God himself, that the day of the Lord is coming and it's going to be a cruel day. A day where God doesn't have any feeling toward what he's doing, except for anger. The shock of the sheer brutality of God's judgment will be incomprehensible to everyone that's on the earth. Look at verses 11 and 12 again. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and I'll lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man more than the gold of a, a wedge of gold of Ophir. The tribulation will be a time of great war, like the world has never experienced. Godless nations bent on world dominance will see other nations weakened by civil war. And natural disasters will hit those nations and weaken them even further. And so these godless nations will attack without mercy or restraint. God says here, I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity, I will punish. The word literally translates in the Hebrew, I will avenge. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. To avenge is to inflict harm in return for wrong that's been done. It's to take vengeance on the guilty. God said that. He said, I, that's the day when I will take vengeance on the guilty. It's the day when I will inflict punishment on them for the wrong that they've done. How many know that there's a lot of wrong being done? He says here that men 
will be more rare on the earth than the finest gold. That's a terrifying thought. Literally, men will die in wars and catastrophe by the billions. Not millions, billions. And he says, men will be more rare on the earth than finest gold. In Jeremiah 16, listen to what the prophet wrote. They will die of deadly disease. They will not be mourned or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. They will die by sword and famine, and their dead bodies will become food for the birds and the wild animals. Those who miss the initial rapture of the bride will face a season of unprecedented death and horror. How many know I'm encouraging you to be ready for the rapture of the bride so that you don't have to face this season? This season of the extermination of the wicked will be a season of refining, purifying, and the purging of the church who are remaining on the earth, as it says in Malachi chapter 3. There will be so much horror and confusion in the world, while there will be a great outpouring of the Spirit in the church. There's going to be a massive amount of horror and confusion in the world, but there's going to be a great outpouring of the Spirit of God in the church. I want you to know this. God didn't abandon the church. Just because the church, the, the, that part of the church doesn't go right away. God doesn't abandon his kids. I want to encourage you with that. God doesn't abandon his children. Rick Joyner prophesied. He said he saw huge stadiums packed with believers crying out to God during this time of tribulation. The unity of the body of Christ will be seen for the first time since the outpouring of the Spirit in the book of Acts. For the first time, the unity will come to the body of Christ since the book of Acts. Look at Acts 2. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. What you need to remember about God is that he's Alpha and Omega. As Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the thing which has been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. The church began with a revival right here that brought about a love and a unity that the world had never experienced before or since. And I want you to know something. The church will end with a repeat of that same revival. How many have ever read where Jesus said, and, and, and I do all these works, but greater works than these shall you do? He's talking about this time. The amount of miracles and supernatural works of God during this time will be mind-blowing. There'll be miracles. There'll be people being saved daily. People coming to Christ. The move of the Spirit will be great. It'll be like... Heaven on earth for the believer seeking God during that time. Instead of being critical and judgmental and petty toward one another, there'll be unity. Can you imagine a church where people aren't critical, judgmental, or petty? I mean, outside of scent of water. <laughs> the body will see believers who will gladly lay down their lives for one another in that time. Now listen. Listen. Don't listen to preachers who say that the Holy Spirit will be removed from the earth at this point. How many have ever heard that, that the Holy Spirit would be removed from the earth? It's literally, that is absolutely as far from being true as it could possibly be. The move of the Holy Spirit will be the greatest move of the Holy Spirit that the world's ever seen during this time. The Holy Spirit will be here right alongside of everyone that's here. 
This will be a, such a season of outpouring of the Holy Ghost that it will literally be spiritually like heaven on earth while hell rages all around them. The dichotomy or contrast between the church and the world will be mind-blowing. The terror and the confusion of the wicked will look like the darkest night in comparison to the brilliancy of the peace and the joy that will be within the church at that time. Now, right before the rapture of the bride, or as John put it, the harvest of the first fruits, the mark of the beast will be globally implemented right before. So when you see the mark of the beast being globally implemented, then the rapture of the bride is gone. And at that point, things become wicked all over the earth. Those who receive the mark will be sealed by Satan. And they'll be bound for eternal damnation. Those who don't will be pursued and put to death if they're caught. The spirit of the Antichrist will grow globally as the people who receive the mark will become devoid of conscience. This is what happens. I never knew this till the Lord told me this. The people who receive the mark of the beast, their conscience will be taken from them. They'll become completely devoid of conscience at that time. Can you imagine being on an earth full of people devoid of conscience? Men will become like beasts. Let's look, in fact, at Revelation 6 and verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given to them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. How many see that? Now, I've heard preachers and prophets say that animals will lose their fear of humans during this time and will be used to kill millions of people. <clears throat> And I believe, you know, that could be partially true, but I don't believe that that's what this is talking about. I believe that men without conscience in that day will kill one another without hesitation. That's what he's, the people who take the mark of the beast, they, would, they will kill for no reason at all. They will have no love, no conscience to hold them back. I believe that these beast-like people will kill for food or pleasure or for no reason other than that they're completely controlled by the demonic. I believe that the mark of the beast and the subsequent withdrawal of men's conscience is literally what Paul was talking about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's look there at verse 7. For the mystery of the iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he is taken out of the way. How many have heard people preach on this many times and always wonder what this meant? The part of God that dwells in every unsaved human heart is the conscience. How many know that every person that's born on the earth is born with some level of conscience? Every person is born with some level of conscience. Now some people, their conscience becomes seared and cold and, and they don't listen to their conscience as they get older for one reason or the other. But every part, every person that's born on the globe is born with a part of God and that part of God is their conscience. And that conscience tells them right from wrong. They don't have to be taught, do they? Child doesn't have to be taught. They know right from wrong. Maybe when they're little, tiny, but as they grow, children know. They know because of the conscience. Once the conscience is removed, men become nothing more than beasts to be slaughtered. In fact, I believe this is how God can destroy men without any kind of remorse or regret in that day because men become nothing more than beasts. The conscience is withdrawn when they take that mark of the beast, however it is, on their hand or forehead, whatever it is. Whenever they receive that mark and they worship the image, the image of the beast, which is, which is Allah, which is the Muslims, it has to do with the Muslims. I ought to put something together about that someday. But that's exactly what it is. It all has to do with, with uh, this movement, the satanic movement of the Muslims. And they'll, all they have to do is confess that Allah is their God. In order to live, that's what they'll have to do in this last day. That's part of the mark of the beast, worshiping that image. And when their conscience, how many have ever seen some of, those, the, some of the Muslims, the radical Muslims with that, with that psychotic look like there's almost not a human being there anymore? How many have ever seen that? Like they have, they've lost all humanity in their eyes. That's what happens. Their conscience is withdrawn. The part of God that was in them is gone. And they're given over completely to the demonic. 
Now, although there will come great revival during the tribulation, it will still be a time of insecurity and instability and great uncertainty. People in the United States will see massive changes. Look at Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and he talked with me, saying unto me, Come here, and I'll show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. We've talked about this several times over the last month. He said, I'm going to show you the judgment. How many see that word, judgment? It's the word krima. It means I'm going to show you how she's going to be condemned for her crimes. I'm going to show you the judgment, the condemnation that's coming to her for her crimes. <clears throat> now, I've heard well-known international ministers and they're still preaching that God wants to save the United States. I just want you to know something. Don't pray against God's will. You got to know God's will. And once you know God's will, don't be praying against God's will just because it's in your best interest. How many know that a lot of people pray what's in their best interest? We got to stay away. We got to pray, let your will be done, God. You know, this is what I would want, but my, not my will. Yours be done. <clears throat> I heard one minister say that God saved Nineveh because she repented and he wants to do the same thing for this nation. But they, these men don't understand God. I want to quickly sum up. Let's look again at the why. Look at Revelation uh, 17, the next verses 2 through 7. <clears throat> with whom the kings, he's talking about the great whore that's going to be judged. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said to me, why did you want marvel? And I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Again, the United States was formed by God and for God's own purpose. You don't believe me, you need to read that book I just told you about last week. You need to read that book. It'll change the way you think. Light and the glory. Get it? It's worth, it's worth reading. It's worth the 10 bucks or whatever it costs. Maybe it's 20. I don't know. Carol can find them used for like six. The United States was formed by God for his own purpose, and she became powerful. And with power came pride. Her power and her pride drove her to become globally abusive. I could stand up here for a long time and tell you all the global abuses that the United States has been involved in. Remember, the beast represents Islam. We talked about this several weeks ago. The angel that John, <clears throat> the angel tells John that the woman, which is the United States, is carried by the beast. How many see that? <clears throat> the beast that carries her. How many ever saw that before? So she's carried by the beast. How? On August the 15th of 1971, Richard Nixon ended what was known as the gold standard system. There were more dollars being printed than there was gold to back them up. <clears throat> so he had to end it. When the gold standard was shocked, in fact, it shocked everyone that it was ended. But when it was shockingly ended, the dollar began a free fall towards worthless paper in the early 70s. Now, around 1974, America devised a brilliant plan. Literally, they say it was the most brilliant plan, cunning, that was ever devised in the United States. They devised this brilliant plan to regain their wealth. They devised a brand new system known as the petrodollar. How many have ever heard of the petrodollar? The United States made a deal with the devil. We would supply arms, 
You can Google this. Don't believe me, Google it. It's all true. We would supply arms, protection, and massive wealth to the Arab nations. In exchange, they agreed to sell all their oil globally, but only for American dollars. This caused the dollar value to soar as the whole world was forced to bow to the United States in our petrodollar system. But according to Revelation 17, the beast of the Islamic nations has been the back that the woman has ridden on financially. How bizarre is it that Richard Nixon's petrodollar scheme and the men who schemed to break is mentioned in Revelation 17. But it is. The beast has been forced to carry the woman on its back for almost 50 years. Now, I'm not saying that this part is thus saith the Lord, but this came to me when I saw it. How many understand what a jubilee is? A jubilee is a, is a time of freedom, and it lasts after 50 years, freedom comes back. And according to jubilee, the beast potentially could be freed from its service in just 2024, which is coming up really soon. How many understand that? Something's going to happen in 2024. Mark your calendars. So remember, John said that the beast has 10 horns, which is 10 Muslim nations that will form a coalition. Now look at Revelation 17, starting at verse 8. <clears throat> the beast that you saw was, was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen. The one is. The other is not yet come. And when he comes, he will continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even is, he is the eighth and is of the seven. And he goes into perdition. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and they give their power and their strength unto the beast. They have one mind, they're of one heart, and they give all their power and all their strength unto the beast. So first of all, who is the eighth beast? He said the beast is the eighth beast. The angel said that its identity is an empire that was, is not, but will be again. That was, is not, but will be again. This is probably the resurrection of the Turkish Ottoman Empire, which will be led by the person who is the Antichrist. Study the Ottoman Empire and the evil, evil, wicked, Christian-hating, Jew-hating, killing, destroy, horrible Ottoman Empire, which was eventually stopped, so it was, but it's not right now, but it will be. It's going to rise again out of Turkey. And their goal will be world domination. But to dominate the world, you must first dethrone the one who currently reigns. How many know it's the will of God? How many know you can pray to your blue in the face? Noah could have prayed that it wouldn't rain, but it would have still rained. You can pray to your blue in the face, but God's will is going to be done. You just don't want to be one that's fighting against God. Look at Revelation 17, verses 16 through 18. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, they'll hate the whore. And they'll make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will. That's the terrifying part of it all. 
God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. How many get an ominous feeling when you hear those words? So even though the U.S. is responsible for its great wealth, the beast of Islam hates her. In fact, that's one of the things that they continually chant, death to the U.S., death to the U.S., death to the U.S. Death to Europe, death to Israel, death to the United States. And they will not rest. You have never seen a driving force on this earth like Islam. Never. There has never been one that matches. Why? Because it is literally being driven by Satan himself. There has never, never been an ideology. They mask themselves as religion, but all they are is a world controlling organization. They just want to control the world. The world has never seen her like. So the beast of Islam has been made wealthy by the United States, but they still hate her. Verse 16 says, and the beast will make what he calls the whore, or he's talking about the United States, will make her desolate and naked. How? Then John writes, they will burn her with fire. This is prophetically declaring nuclear war coming to the United States. There are so many places in Scripture where nuclear war is prophetically declared. So many places. I should put them all together sometime just so that I have them. There are so many places where nuclear war is... That's why I said, if people that live near big cities need to get away from big cities, whatever it costs them to get away, they need to get away. Because you're going to see places that are going to go completely going to be annihilated completely. It'll be shocking in the brutality. And they won't be alone. The Bible says they won't be alone because in Ezekiel it talks about it, in, in Isaiah it talks about it, there will be armies come from the north that God assembles from the north. Russia and along with China will come against the United States and at some point will inhabit parts of the United States for a very short amount of time, but they will. During this time, during this tribulation time, this is why we would need to be ready. How many know it's better to be ready? Right? Amen? Say that. It's better to be ready. Right? It's better to be ready. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be ready for when Jesus comes for his bride, it's better to be in that first group. We don't want to see the horrors if we can escape them. We don't want to be part of it. We want to be ready. Look at verse 17 again. I'm almost done. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. How many of this is sermons a little too hard? You okay? I really struggled to preach this. I can ask my wife. I struggled to preach this sermon. I said, I don't know if I ought to preach this sermon. It's just too much. How many know it's better to be ready though? Right? If the watchman sees the enemy coming and he doesn't warn the people, then it's the watchman's fault. God's will is to judge and purge the evil from our land. How many know the land has been defiled? You can look at the land and, and, and it's beautiful. You look, at, you look at pictures of the United States. How many know? You look at pictures of the, and it's beautiful. It's amazing with its, with its mountains and its rivers and, 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 the, and the, beautiful, the beauty of the lakes and, and all of our shorelines. And, and you look at the United States and it's beautiful, but God doesn't see it like that. He sees the vile sin that's defiled the land That's how God looks. Those are God's eyes. He sees it through different eyes than I do, through different eyes. And I got to see it through his eyes and cry out, Father, let your will be done. God's will is to judge and purge evil from our land. So he's going to, by his will, cause it to be burned with fire. Why? Because the land is covered in sexual perversion and in idols and in the blood of the innocent. 
All who go in the rapture of the wise virgins in the harvest of the first fruits will miss the destruction of the United States. How many would just as soon miss the destruction of the United States? Because something in you loves this land. Something in you, you've been raised here and something in you would die to protect this land almost like it's part of you. And you would despise to see it destroyed. The foolish virgins who are the lukewarm will be here to see it and to experience it. Multitudes will be protected during this time as God will supernaturally warn them to flee from targeted areas. I, I could tell you so many things. Read that book that I told you. And watch how God's will's done to form a nation. And God will protect his people. Remember, God is doing this because the cup of his wrath is completely... How many have ever said, I've had it up to here? Right? That's what God said. That's it. I've had it up to here. The cup of his wrath is full. It has to be poured out. Now look at the picture that the, that the Lord painted for John. This is going to take me a minute to read this in Revelation 18. Revelation 18, and I want, it's, this is also in Jeremiah 15, 51. This is talking about the destruction of the United States. The Lord told me this 40 years ago. 40 years ago. I didn't have any prophetic insight back then, but I've known this for 40 years, he told me. This is, watch this, and when you see it, you'll see it. <clears throat> and I, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice come from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. It may be but not partakers of her sins. Remember we said it means withdraw, separate yourselves. Separate yourselves. Separate yourselves from her lifestyle. Separate yourselves from her movies and her music and her sin. Separate yourselves. No matter what, separate yourselves from her entertainment. Separate yourselves. Get away from it. Move back. Just like Moses said to the people, get away from Korah. Get away from the tents of those people. Move back. I'm going to kill them. Move back. Right now, if you want to be ready when Jesus returns, you want to be part of the first fruits that are withdrawn from the earth, it's time to withdraw yourself from Babylon. Get away from her. Get away from her. Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she's filled to fill her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and I shall see no sorrow. Isn't it, doesn't that arrogant? We're too powerful to be attacked. We're too powerful to be destroyed. We won't see sorrow. Sounds like something that the captain said about the Titanic, doesn't it? Even God can't sink her. Therefore shall her plagues come how, in how quick? One day. Death, mourning, famine. She shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. Can you see it? Can you see it? 
the merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls and fine linen, purple and silk and scarlet and, and all time wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and manners of vessel of the most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil, fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves in the souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from you. And all things which were dainty and goodly, he says, now they're departed from you. And you shall find them no more at all. The merchandise of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off. Or the merchants, rather, for the fear of her torment and weeping and wailing. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as traded by the sea stood far off. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and they cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, and all that the ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she's made desolate. Rejoice over her, heaven. Wow, doesn't it change? Because heaven sees through different eyes, doesn't it? Rejoice over her, heaven. And holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone, and he cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he is shall be found any more in you. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard any more in thee. And the light of a candle shall, shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain upon the earth. How many know this is a terrifying scripture? This is actually the sad end to the land of the free and the home of the brave. America the beautiful will be stripped of her beauty. And the Bible says her cities will be made desolate. When you look at this verse and you say, in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints, and all that were slain upon the earth, and you say, that can't be America. Dan, she doesn't execute Christians, but you've got to remember something. God sees the beginning and the end at the same time. As Alpha and Omega, <clears throat> he sees what is, and he sees what was, and what will be. And also he sees what would have been. The prophets and the saints who were murdered in the United States and that this country is responsible for by our global influence, were exterminated in abortion mills and clinics, both here and around the world. Imagine all the prophets and the saints and the believers that were murdered in abortion clinics. God saw them already as prophets. You know that, right? And because of the blood of the innocent, God won't relent till it's over. The blood of these innocent, unborn martyrs still cries out for vengeance. So again, Revelation 17 says that the beast or the spirit of Antichrist will burn the United States with fire. Joseph Faraz is an American author and he's a journalist. He's the editor-in-chief of the conservative website, which is WND, which is World Net Daily. His G2 intelligence bulletin says that between 12 and 70 nukes have already been smuggled into the United States by terrorists by way of the Mexican border. 
Radical Muslims pay the Mexican gang MS-13 to smuggle bombs and terrorists across unprotected border crossings. Captured Al-Qaeda members and documents say that the plan is called the American Hiroshima. That's what they refer to it as. The American Hiroshima, which will, they will detonate nuclear bombs in several U.S. cities all at the same time. It's going to look just like 9-11 only on a much larger scale. You don't believe me? This is coming. This is coming. God prophesied it. Our government knows about it. But remember this. The angel told John that this is going to happen in order to fulfill the will of God. As much as it grieves our heart, you've got to know this is God's will. The wickedness must be judged. Like I said before, Noah's prayers wouldn't have stopped the flood. Lot's prayers wouldn't have stopped the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. When the season of wrath becomes inevitable, and how many know the season of wrath is inevitable? All you can do is zealously repent and pray for daily counsel and direction. I believe now is the time, and the fuse has already been lit. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Father, I know that these messages that you give us, some of them are really hard to deal with. But we live in that time, Father, we would rather have the truth than have our heads buried in the sand and pretend we don't see. We would rather have the truth. We see the United States and the government spiraling out of control. We think that we could somehow pray enough for the right people to get in office in order to change the whole thing. But God, we see that you put, I truly believe to this day, that you put Donald Trump in office to show that wickedness cannot be stopped in this generation. Even though you would put a strong man with a strong agenda in office, there's nothing that can stop the wickedness because it's your will that it drive itself to destruction. We see on the horizon things that are approaching quickly. We see <clears throat> what seems to be, what appears to be uh, a civil war looming on the very horizon as the lines become more distinct as the nation is parted and separated into two vastly different mindsets. We see wicked men, evil, sinful men, without conscience on one side. And we see men who have conscience and desire to see a godly nation on the other. And the battle, the battle lines have been drawn. And I believe that soon something's, it's, it's like being in a, in a, in a, place that's filled with gunpowder and it's just waiting for a spark to fall and father our natural man it, it brings fear because we don't want to see it happen we don't want to see multitudes of people destroyed we want to see revival. Something in us just wants to see revival. But Father, we believe that you're going to bring revival. We believe that in the darkest of night, the light is going to shine the brightest. We believe that your spirit's going to move greater than we've ever experienced in this last day. But we also believe that Satan will be free to move and work. The Bible tells us for 42 months, 
unhindered. Father, so we need to know Jesus. We need to know a true walk, not a Christian walk, but a true walk with Christ. A deep, desperate need to walk close to Him continually. Father, we seek You because we need You more than we've ever needed You before. I pray that Your children would give their hearts back to You. Not just now, but every single day that we would commit every single minute that we have left to seeking your face. Lord, we need you. Desperately, we need you. Spirit of God, we cry out to you. Take our lives. Mold them into the image that you've desired for them to be. Let us walk in love that we might show Jesus to the world. We worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll be here at 5 o'clock tonight.